Which is good. Thank you. Already, yeah. The printout. Oh, you tonight. And That's why there I we go. It. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This work session of the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee will come to order at 7 p.m. on December 6, 2016. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that I forwarded the minutes of December 1st to you. Uh, Barbara had them done, and I popped those out this morning. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am? November 29th. November 29th. I'm, okay, November 29th. Sorry about that. Uh, so um, are you prepared to vote on that tonight, or do you want to wait until the next meeting? Did you, what is it? Did I was you get the them? minutes of minutes. the 29th. The 29th. Okay, I'll check when I get home. I didn't we get can that. we can do that. There's I was pretty sure that I did that I forwarded what you sent me, Barbara. I'll check that in the morning and get them all out to you and then on Thursday we can okay. go yes. ahead and do minutes. Eleven twenty nine one six. Is it possible to have Barbara just mail them to us directly? Oh you mean email directly? Yeah. Well you can if you want to use everybody's email address, just shoot them out. It's your choice. Okay. That would, that's fine. Okay. Okay. And then Barbara sends the drafts, and then after we have made corrections, should we need to, then I forward the corrected version to Christy to get on, uh, online. Okay. Um, we have reviewed some of the Selectman's Money articles already. Um, Church Street Force, Maine, any changes on that between... Last week and tonight. No changes on um, Lafayette Road sewer. Down through 28, there are no changes. Down through 28, there are no changes. Okay. And that's household hazardous waste collection. So yes, we're starting with human service agencies, Three, Article six, 29. Six, <laughs> Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $174,000? for the cost of Hampton's contribution to 20 human service agencies in the Seacoast in the amounts corresponding to the agency's requests in the right-hand columns as follows. And you have a column of the 2016 funding for this year and the requested 2017 funding, and the amounts are identical, 174475 these 20 human service agencies shall each be required to give a written report at the end of the calendar year 2017 to the Board of Selectmen highlighting what the funds were used for and what impact the funds had in assisting to achieve their goals and objectives. Um, this has been on the warrant for the last probably 20 years yeah. and these agencies serve as a backup to our welfare officer. She certainly can't provide all the services, so she has a list of referrals and uh, refers families in need to these agencies as appropriate. Um, questions, uh, Ginny? No. Nope. Regina? No. Mike? Uh, I was going to make a comment that we probably get enough uh, services from these agencies to offset the expense we have with this born article, so we probably come out ahead. Mm -hmm. based on it's a very valuable resource for the welfare officer. Mr. Kravitz, sir? Yeah, no, the other thing I think of last year when she came in, she mentioned that there's a coordinating facility now that selects the recipients where they go. That's what the welfare person told us. Yeah, she knows where yeah. she should send people for different needs and it works well and some facilities don't uh yeah so that, you know she there's someone who's coordinating okay. mr henderson sir yeah just a tremendous amount of uh you know services that are given to uh the town and i think it's a great asset to this town the uh group that's listed here and it's worked right you know successful for all the years that we've had it so right. I, 
in favor of that. And since there's an empty chair between Mr. Kravitz and Mr. Henderson, uh, Mr. Lapham is not feeling well this evening, so he has been excused. Mr. Pluff? No, most of these went to town meeting at one time or another. They had to go and, through town meeting. And were requested and approved, right. and then they have been carried on Correct. in this fashion since. So town meeting approves them. I guess we probably should. <laughs> I'm not sure if my question should go to, to the to Regina or to the, to the town manager. Um, the written reports were satisfactory for all of these agencies? Yes, and they'll be put up online as soon as we receive the electronic copies. Okay, but, but you were satisfied and the selectman was satisfied with yes, sir. the results. Okay, thank you. That's all I need to know. Thank you very much. Citizen Jones. I found my colleagues' uh, contributions to be more than adequate to reflect my views. Okay. Danielle? Yeah, I think that these are some great services that the town benefits from, and it's the same amount as last year, so... Yeah, not just the town. I mean, the people, the poor people who are having difficulties, yeah. Yeah. really are are better served by having this variety to choose from. <laughs> right, exactly. Before I answer the question, yes, sir. Are we voting for this official? No, we're not voting no. for any of the special money articles. We're reviewing <coughs> all of them. Opinion. We want, yeah. We, I just want you guys to have quite, you know, ask questions if you have them. I, I think it's fabulous. I vote yeah. for this every year. I think it's great. Good. Mr. Ladd, sir. I'm fine with it, too. You're fine. Okay, well, we've got that one. Did you need a motion or a No, no, because we're not doing, we're this will come in the final about. review, okay. but as long as people are comfortable and have a chance to ask the questions. Right. Next one is called Recreation. <laughs> yeah, Regina, it should be Infrastructure. Oh, yes. <laughs> Special Revenue Fund. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $99,740 for the following purposes of the Parks and Recreation Department. A, the purchase of four sets of new bleachers and picnic tables for the Tuckfield baseball field and the Eaton Park softball field. B, the purchase of a Gator utility vehicle and trailer for the Parks Division. C, the replacement of the carpeting at the Tuck Building. D, the re-roofing of the Eaton Park concession stand, E, the purchase of new office furniture to replace the hand-me-down 1970s furniture that came with the town offices at the time of its purchase, uh, I, whoops, one, F, well, it's little, I didn't put my glasses on, the resurfacing of two inbounds playing areas on the right-hand tennis courts, that includes one coat of plexi cushion blue and one coat of U.S. Open blue, plus striping, and G, restoration of T Tuck 1 field and the Don Butler diamond, as the field is very uneven and requires removal of the grass cover and regrading of the field. H, purchase of a new recreation software program, including the purchase of new tablets and service for the town parking lots and the Parks and Recreation Department, as determined by the Board of Selectmen, the town manager, and the Director of Parks and Recreation and to authorize the withdrawal of $99,740 from the Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund established for the purpose under Article 44 of the 2007 Annual Town Meeting. Um, no tax impact. This money is... is no, no, tax impact. no tax impact. This money is 20% of the parking revenues. Uh, that has been put aside since 2007. So it has, in fact, no tax impact. She just needs the authority of the voters to withdraw the money and spend it as she described. Right. Questions? I'll, I'll start on the other side first. Mr. Ladd? I have none. Mr. Marrer? What's a Gator utility vehicle? Uh, the side-by-side -side ATVs. The little, is. yeah. The little, little, little pickup bed Deere. on the back of it. John, yeah, a little John Deere putt putt. They thing have one goes. at the transfer station. I haven't seen it. Is that similar to what that did the Patriots game when they take somebody off the field and ride them um, off for the broken something like that. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 No, I got it. We just don't want to take anybody <laughs> off the field, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, Danielle, question? None. Uh, Mr. Jones. Madam Chair, are we doing round tables all night? Well, we just, just calm down. It seems to be changing procedure. I'd like to understand. <laughs> well, I just, 
Well, we're doing new and exciting articles, <laughs> Mr. LeBranch. <laughs> oh, I'm only entitled to one question and it has yep. to be procedural? <laughs> Give me a break. You're done. God damn. Done. That, and that's for the night. <laughs> I'd like to know what the fund balance presently is of this fund, please. You snooze, you lose. <laughs> I wasn't snoozing, dear. <laughs> Christy, do you happen to know? <laughs> I don't have my own. coming up with it right now. The Team amount report. that's left in the you fund. Roll there. Get your mm -hmm. 230364 dollars. So it's Thank all. Thank you, Fred. Comfort. You're welcome, sir. Okay. And when was that money originally put there? Hmm? When did they say it was original? 2007. 2007. Yeah. And we keep Because there was a the move at the beach. To Every year ago, yeah, twenty percent. There was a, an article at the beach to take twenty percent of the parking revenues and devote them to the so recreation. This, this, this fund Not gets replenished Not the from recreation. parking revenue every year. No, the, the original intent, the original warrant was for twenty percent of the parking lot revenue to be used for infrastructure projects at the beach, right? At the village district, and then a few years later. Um, Somebody at the beach. We won't use names. Oh, I think it was uh, Charlie. <laughs> hey, no names, please. And somebody said something, and the next thing you know, it wasn't going to the beach infrastructure. It was right. going to the rec department. Right. And that's the short history of that. Thank you. So, Fred, this this reflects everything the rec department needs. Yes, sir. That's the total request for the year. Okay. Thank you. I'm All done, right. Madam Chair. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Pluff. <coughs> All set. Mr. Henderson. Uh, the parks and the recreation, I'm always into the infrastructure and uh, keeping the infrastructure yeah. up. They get a lot of use, Tuck Field and uh, the Deep Eaton Park and that area, so in order to keep them up, mm -hmm. the residents and everything, you got to spend some money, so I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Great recreation program. Mr. Kravitz? Yeah. Uh, the salary line would, doesn't come out at this point. But no. Uh, no. The other thing I raised is Sacred Heart actually uses this. recreation more than anybody else. I'm not, the parochial school. Use the, use well, the there's an article to fund the Sacred Heart School in the SAU 90 yeah, warrant. Right, right, that's for, that's for services that they do not get as a private school that are furnished to the public school well, students. So that's a little separate warrant. Yeah, but, but you'll I see mean, it. The use of a recreation facilities. Um, are primary no, they, don't use these they have their own fields. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Pierce? That was 235, you say, still remains in that count? 230,000. 230,000, okay. Thank yeah. you. Until Bye. it's tapped from this. Regina? I have no questions. Thank Ginny? you. No. Okay, great. Everybody comfortable with and understand this article? Okay. Article 31, Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $90,000 to carry out all lawful functions allowed under federal, state, and local criminal justice forfeiture programs and to authorize the withdrawal of that amount from the Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund created for that purpose under Article 35 of the 2003 town meeting? I think that reference is wrong, folks, um, because if you look at 2006, uh, Article 21, no, oh, wait a minute, that's the private detail fund. Okay. This, I looked up Article 35 in 2003, and I couldn't find it. That's when you're a bad guy and your car gets sealed, a car gets uh, uh, repoed because you've been selling drugs or something. And could be a house, could be a car, vehicle. It's when you're an alleged bad guy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is after the court proceedings and everything, and then the uh, funds well, could be taken away. Court 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 proceedings, potentially. <clears throat> even if, even if the alleged uh, uh, perpetrator is found innocent, he may not without great struggle, get back his uh, assets that have been taken from him. Isn't that true? I'm not so sure that's true, but... Um, There's a wide <laughs> amount of reporting, uh, reporting reflecting that I mean, very thing. 
the court has to sign the courts have to sign off on this agreed so until the court signs off on it, it's usually after the case has uh, been you know gone through the court system yeah. and then the money uh, then is put in so so the feds usual that's an interesting word usually <laughs> well most of the times <laughs> so what's the stats on that is it yeah, 40, I mean, if it goes 50 percent 60 percent what I don't, I don't know the numbers. The feds yeah. take a cut and then give yeah. some to the town. Correct. If, if the yeah. DEA comes in and takes a case over for us, then uh, there's a you know they, there's a percentage cut there between us and them, you know. But what that number is, I'm not sure. Do you know, Fred? It no, it depends you? upon the case. How many, yeah. uh, the point I was making is they're taking the that, that assets are taken uh, without necessarily being a guilty verdict, and certainly without the appeals process oh, having we? been exhausted. That was the only point I was making. This is not necessarily bad guys, as was just reported. The alleged bad guys would be more accurate. Alleged bad guy. All right. I don't want to offend any <laughs> purported bad guys. No, it's guys not a matter of there. offense. It's a matter of precision. <laughs> any questions from anyone on my left, Sonny? Yeah, I'm just curious how much money's in it, and do they return the money if the person's found innocent? I have no idea. That's court. Well, I would also have my same question: Is yes. how much is in the fund? There is money in there. Ellen holds it. I don't know. Yeah. We get it annually, but we don't know off top of our head. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting article because I believe this is the same number we see every year, right? Ninety thousand. That's correct. That's that's the maximum we allow them to take. Even if they had five hundred thousand, we could only right. allow them to take ninety. Right. Right. <laughs> why? Why is they that? Can take. Because that's a predetermination by the town. The, the, the town meeting decided on that figure when this first started, yeah. and the police department agreed with it, and the selectmen agreed with it, so that's where it stayed. So the originating, the original town warrant which authorizes this put a cap of 90000 per year? No, that's what, that was in the original warrant, and they've never changed it. Okay, so it's just, we've always warrant. done it that way, right? right? Yeah, that's what I was saying. So we've right. always done it this way. Correct. And as I recall, we almost never say a word about it, other than there's nothing to say. Basically, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. And this year we're saying a word or two about it, right? Yeah. Well, Which it? is well, an interesting thing for a democracy to exercise actually talking about something, isn't it? Well, what, yes. So who keeps the money, and where the treasury it? keeps the money. It's deposited into an account, a holding account, just for this. Function. Nothing comes through the town on that one. No. I don't think we're seeing as much forfeitures as we used to either. You know, mm -hmm. 15, 20 years ago, you know, we saw a lot of forfeitures. You know, now the uh, say the, a lot of the drug deals, et cetera, out there. They're leasing a lot of, you know, cars, leasing property, leasing homes. So therefore, well, the forfeiture is not restricted so, to no, but I'm drug related saying, activities. Either. No, it, it's so. many uh, activities, but I'm just showing out one example. So I don't think there's as many well, forfeitures as there was back in the day. You know? Well, yeah, it doesn't matter how many uh, to me anyway. Uh, what matters to me is how much is in the fund. Can we find that out? Yeah. He said he would find out. Uh, yeah. And. 90,000 is just the number we pluck out of the air, and for functions allowed under federal, state, and local criminal justice forfeiture programs. Can we have a clue of what those functions are allowed under such programs? Yeah, that's classified. I'm curious about overlap. We're, we, we're funding the police activities now. This is adding to at least some of those activities, isn't it? The funds that are collected here through court seizure and approval go towards drug uh, drug. Uh, operations, anti-drug operations. Good. And like, go funding the regular police department. Right. Like DUI uh, checkpoints and things like no, that? No, that's, yeah. that's funded by the state. Uh, this is strictly drug related. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So drug investigations are funded via this vehicle? If the money is there, yes. They yep. should. What? Okay, David has a uh, question. Uh, I'm not understanding what this thing even does. Okay. I'm doing everything. I understand from watching TV when the drug dealers are caught or other people, the, uh, the, their Cadillac and their yachts and all this are confiscated. And I've seen that, and then they give it up, and the money has to go somewhere. I've never known where it goes. But with that as a baseline understanding, why are we raising $90,000 if they're forfeiting their stuff? So I'm not understanding the need for the $90,000 or where it goes. I need that to be explained. If we're getting money in, we've got to accept it. It allows the town right. to yeah. accept. This account allows the town to accept this forfeiture. Oh, accept it. And without this one article, would we would not be able to accept the funds, and that's why we have this. It's going to be worded a little bit clearer, and they should also add the words about drugs. Not correct, Fred. We can yes. accept the yes. Yeah. yeah, there's no tax impact of this whatsoever. If the funds are there, we can use them for drug 
activities. It just means a little clarity. Yeah. I heard it, it's drug related only. That should be put in that's, here. And the that's fact where that the we're going to collect is. the money should be in here, yeah. just so we can understand yeah. it better for the average person. Well, I, 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 this one doesn't have it, but it should say no tax impact as well. No, I understand that. Yeah. This, this, this Warren article, correct me if I'm wrong, Fred, this Warren article enables us to take money out of the fund. Correct? Well, that's it allows correct. you to accept. It right. doesn't have any effect on whether or not we can put money into the fund. Well, you can't put money. Because that's just happening anyway, right? If the court awards the dollars to the town, they go into the fund. Right. Yeah. So all this Warren article does is take money out of the fund. Yeah. Up to $90,000, right? It, it sounds like we're raising money. We, we are. We're raising it out of the fund. That's the it raise it well. doesn't clearly articulate that. that well, it does. Yeah, that's no, to me it doesn't, or I, I wouldn't have asked the question I if it was clear. I'm trying to explain to you as legalese. That's okay. the language that has to be used. Yeah. You're going to have this Warren article for the right. average person right. voting, and right. it would have been me without hearing all this explanation. I'm right. looking at this. I would have thought it was just the opposite of what you're saying happens. That's mm -hmm. my point. Yeah. I think yeah. It could use a little clarity, and I'll stop there. All right. right. We'll have to talk you to you. We'll have to yes, talk sir. to the. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk to the attorney general and find out if they wish to change the language because this is their language. Yeah. Yeah. It's required by law, David. Uh, basically, they control what happens. Should they, they, then you allowed to put abbreviations underneath? This really means the following. <laughs> that would be nice, but yes, no. It would. Yeah, you're not basically allowed to do that in certain articles. So, okay, no. but we'll we'll ask. No, I'm serious. I know you're. I know you're serious. serious. Funny yeah. you we'll ask. The floor? Yeah. What happens to the drugs that what happened to the drugs? They go up to auction too. They confiscated and destroyed. They the town's up. <laughs> they sent to okay. Conk and then they destroyed. No. Yeah. What happened to the Christmas tree? Confiscated and, oh. and destroyed. Me. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> Article 32 to add windows to the children's no, room. No, no, we already did that one. Well, that's what I'm oh, yeah. about to say. Yeah, we did. We, we took care of that the other day. Now we have the conservation fund. I did speak with Jay Diener earlier today. Um, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the Hampton Conservation Fund? This fund is used to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of, or otherwise conserve and properly utilize open spaces and conservation easements in Hampton in accordance with RSA 36A, sections one through four inclusive. Recent acquisitions, such as the Batchelder Field Conservation Easement, have significantly reduced the size of the fund, and the goal is to return the fund to adequate levels to enable the Commission to conserve additional lands on behalf of the Town of Hampton. Um, there is, uh, the tax impact has not been calculated, but there will be a small tax impact. The conservation fund is currently sitting at approximately $143,000, and and change and the conservation commission is looking at two potential properties and if they have an opportunity to buy a property for conservation purposes they do need some funds to at least make a down payment and then they would negotiate the purchase etc and what are those two pieces of land um, no, 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 I'm not going to, no. It's not made public yet. Those, it's not yeah. public. But but just so you know, they are in, They are working currently on potentially gathering more property for mm -hmm. conservation purposes. Start on Bob's side this time. Questions? No, I'm fine with it. Excellent. David? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, Danielle? All set, thanks. Citizen Jones, <laughs> sir. Uh, Madam Chair, they do have some money right now, as you pointed out, 143, 143,000. Is that accurate, Christy? Yes. Okay. So they do have some money, as you call it, Madam Chair. So they can move forward and negotiate with some money, as you claim they need. Well, to it have. depends on how much. So they do have some money. Yes. Madam Chair. I had okay. So we are already got some money there. There's no need <laughs> to put more money there. Of course. In order to have some money. I would want to congratulate town management and the Board of Selectmen for radically improving the language of this annual Warren article. It no longer is offensive to certain people's eyes. It no longer reads the non-existent 
Land Acquisition Fund, because such a fund doesn't exist. It's now properly called the Conservation Fund. Right. I am delighted to see that change, uh, Mr. Manager, and Regina, if you would communicate to your board of selectmen, how happy I am to see the proper words there. I will there. most definitely do Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> and if Thank you, you, Madam Chair. And if you're... Steve. If you're happy, we're happy. We are really excited. Are you for it or against it? <laughs> we're not voting tonight. <laughs> All set, thank you. All set, Mr. Blunt? I think I know what's that. Anyone over here? Sonny? <laughs> uh, it occurs to me, you know, most people, if they want to donate property to go to town, they do it for, they get a tax break. You know, so there's a lot of ways to negotiate. Correct. You but know, so but if there is property, really just need seed money that people want yeah. to yeah. sell, because if it's a valuable like to piece of land, they're not going to sell it for yeah. fifty thousand or yeah. hundred. So we don't have donate it for yeah. five hundred thousand or whatever. Yeah. So we don't have the land strip of, stripped of every tree, uh, Mr. Pierce. I'm all set. Thank Gina? you. I'm all set. I just Mr. wanted to say that, like you said, there is a couple projects in the pipeline, and I was actually talking to the director, and she's saying. On average, it's at least a hundred thousand oh, sure. dollars a project. So yeah. I think the twenty thousand dollars is yeah. definitely worth Any it. Any idea the size of the acreage? I don't. It's a, information's not made public yet. Yeah. She just she, I asked her, you know, whether there was mm -hmm. projects in the pipeline, and she said there's yeah. at least two as of right now. Thank you. Jenny? No questions. But we were very fortunate to get what we got in Bachelor de Field. That's one of the most beautiful things to uh, to observe when you're in Hampton. Are you comfortable with this, Michael? I'm all comfortable with this. I'm just going to refer to the library windows. Is it my memory correct that they're going to come in and tell us why it's going to be 45000 Well, years? she's going to come in for the final review. But I think she did put in how many windows and yeah. whatever so that the people will have a little better understanding. Then you have the electronic storage of town records. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to begin the process of converting stored paper documents to electronic format as authorized by Chapter 226 of the Acts of 2016? Said sum of $50,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriations from prior years, as of December 31, 2016, with no amount to be raised from taxation. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32,7 Roman 6, and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31, 2019, whichever occurs sooner. Once again, no tax impact. Um, Fred, do you want to do a brief explanation yeah. on this? Why don't you sure. sit in the, in the chair? These chairs are killing my back. That's why I don't want Madam Chair, the, uh, if you take a tour through the basement of the town hall, you'll see the first area we want to fix is uh, right the tax collector's vault, which is behind this section of the building. You're saying stuffed with papers. It is stuffed to the ceiling with paper. And those papers have to be kept permanently. They cannot be disposed of, and they're starting to seriously deteriorate. We have to use them on a regular basis all year long for various people who come in who are closing on property or doing research on prior paid tax bills or, or liens that were placed against property. We, so we have to keep that information. It has to be available to the citizens of the community for their purposes and for their real estate purposes. Um, we're afraid if we don't do something soon, a lot of those records are just going to just evaporate. They're going to deteriorate. They're, they're, they're in pretty poor condition as it is. So we'd like to start the process by cleaning that vault out. And obviously we'd hire a company to come in and do that professionally. So this is just the beginning of a process. We have um, that vault completely full. We have another vault that's full of all the legal records of the town. We have another vault that's full of uh, all of the building department records. And then we have uh, the back storage area behind us with row after row after row after row after row of, of um, uh, file cabinets that all has to be reduced so that we can save those with those records. And yes, this will go in the cloud. This, uh, our, this amount of money will cover how much of that? We don't know. Okay. That's something we're going to have to go out and do a public bid on. 
and, and when they take the documents, they're they going to come here. They're not removing the documents in the building. Okay, so who will do the actual converting of the paper documents to? We, we will hire a corporation or company to come in with their equipment and to actually do it on site. Okay. Once the, uh, the, digit, the digitized documents are confirmed and accurate, then the paper copies can legally be destroyed. Okay. We have to have two copies of each digitized record. Mm -hmm. one, one goes into storage at the state vault in Concord, where it, where it can be uh, readily available in case something should happen to the record that's here. Those records will ultimately go online. So the records won't be destroyed. They'll go to con the paper records will go to Concord. No, the the, the electronic uh, electronic copy of the record will go to copy to, to Concord to be stored in their oh, vault. Okay. So we have a second electronic record. Okay. Uh, that's a requirement. The the, the the statute that's cited here allowed us to stop microfilming. It's a medium yes. that is very hard to, to to manage at the current time, and mm -hmm. and uh, the law required us to have two silver halide microfilms. For every one we produce, do we still have microfiche? We we do not fiche film. Microfilm. We do have film. We have 35 millimeter and we have 16 millimeter film. There are uh, we can convert that to digitized records through various vendors, and that's what we'll do with those records. Okay. So there's no need to maintain those once you because those will be transferred to to the new system. That's correct. Okay, yep. that's good. The the dampness is the problem or a large part of the problem. It is for records. And at the Old Town office, at one point, there was a flood that destroyed a great deal of the... Yeah, thousands and thousands of records. Yeah, so. of the records. When you put stuff out to the clouds, and I know as a person, you eventually get charged if you have too much out there. What's the anticipated cost for the cloud? For Don't know yet. Records? We're going to have to ask that question as we go through this process. So you can hmm. be looking into that. Right. Yeah. We other... don't want to take any chances on what the cost is. Good. The second question I have, which is... I don't mean this the wrong way, but with all this stuff you see on TV between the emails being stolen, the Russians involved, and the Russians <laughs> doing the things with the, on the voting system, and breaking into the State Department, and oh, breaking yeah. into oh, yeah. to other, the armies, and the, all these, yes. which is supposed to be. Right. If we have some clown, because I'm saying, who would want to look at our records? Because I don't even want to look at my You'd own be records. surprised. Uh, the public record, how do we... They will, part of this whole thing will be to make this as secure as possible. Absolutely. We currently have, uh, periodically we receive uh, uh, attempts to break into our system from Russian and Chinese venues. Uh, last year we were averaging several hundred a day at one point. Good. I was making that up, right? <laughs> no, not making it up. It was a pain in the, you know what, it, it was quite an experience just trying to keep them out of here. Uh, but we managed to do that. They weren't really interested in us. They just playing around. Um, but they didn't access our system, so we, we do keep a close eye on it. I would say I receive um, about six or seven Cyrillic written emails a month and probably an equal number of Chinese emails per month. Wow. And little did they know that you could read them. <laughs> I wish I could because uh, <laughs> I'm sure they're a bunch of gibberish. But <laughs> Thank you for your Thank you. Tim, question? The records that you're digitizing are actually public records. That's correct. So they're open to the public. There's nothing to really worry about anyone right. getting access to them. Yep. And they will be online when we finish. Well, you don't want anybody and to destroy the, them. And That's correct. Them. Yeah. You cannot change, change them. You cannot change them. If they're online in the data, the answer is yes, they could. That's a potential. Anything's, anything's possible. Yeah. I learned that a long time ago. <laughs> U.S. Army made it very clear to me that I was in charge of security and records and made it very clear to me that you can change anything you want. The documents not, need not be secure. If they're public records, it needs to be secure. The devices that they're on, so that they cannot be written by anyone but secure personnel. Right. Period. The documents themselves do not need protection, only the device. As far as uh, Chinese, Russian hackers, I mean, I have a website, usadba.com, and, and you can tell by that name, Chinese and Russians have loved that from day one. <laughs> I mean, they're constantly going out. I, I often play with them. But, uh, yeah, they, they've been very They should active. at least send you some, some fresh borscht or some uh, uh, Chinese <laughs> No, I, sometimes, vegetables, sometimes uh, I'll play with them and I'll put up a fake page, you know, something they might be interested in. Drive them crazy. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I want to monitor exactly. I can actually pinpoint you very them. finite addresses that they're coming from when I put up such uh, uh, pages to get yep. them interested. But they come into me anyway, every time, all the time. They all love the time. you. They love you. 
They love you. Oh, it's the name. It's like, yeah. this must be a department somewhere in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> you could talk him to death. <laughs> Actually, I, can, I, I achieved that by simply putting recordings of the budget committee up there. So I, <laughs> That's a self-recording. <laughs> Oh dear. So uh, you, you, you didn't answer one of my questions, which was which documents that you're going to begin. Uh, and I thank you for that. And uh, obviously, you're not going to be charging access because it's simply going to be on the web, right? For the yeah, users. we'll put it up on the. Do you oh. presently charge uh, access? If it's on the web, no. It's, no, it's for the paper documents. Paper documents, yes. What yeah. is what is that charge? Uh, right now, it's fifty cents a sheet. So that's if they're copying rather than right. just researching. Right. Well, and you have to also, if it's a certain years, you have to climb to the ceiling of the vault in order to get them. Right. So, which is kind of a little awkward for the young ladies who worked out here. So. <laughs> now the Warren article reads very broadly, you know, to basically to digitize every, everything. Right. And uh, which raised the question in my mind, if we fund $50,000 a year, how many years before we actually get everything digitized? We don't know. We're, this is the first year attempt to find out exactly what's going on, and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Dry run. Yeah. Dry run, so to speak. I, yeah. I assume you're going to be putting out this exercise the bid. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I said that's true. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Thank okay. you, sir. Well, we've pretty well worked our way through. Do you have any other comments, Fred, to make on the articles? No, there are four additional articles that the selectmen have not completed. Collective bargaining. Well, those are collective bargaining. There's four of those. Yes. Uh, just four general topics. Right. There's a collective bargaining. Uh, there's public works equipment. There's two of those. Okay. And there's the fire engine. It's one of those. Okay. So they're going to do those Monday night. Uh, I expect one article to be completely withdrawn, uh, which is over a million dollars. I expect another article to be substantially modified, uh, which is... Well, the fire engine is about $700,000, $750,000. I expect that to be substantially modified. And um, there's a, uh, I expect to make a recommendation after discussing with Public Works uh, on the seawall to see if we can't get that cost down. Do you think we're running down? We can't account for private petition articles, but do you think you're getting close to the end? You might be pulling one or two. But you think with the four we're, gonna, we're probably going to pull another two articles, uh, and we'll be finished. So four collective bargaining and maybe two more yeah. regular articles? Two, right. maybe three. Because the 20th is our next right. meeting date. Because mm -hmm. we lost those three dates at the beginning of the season. Uh, so I think what we're going to have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is schedule uh, the leftover money articles, collective bargaining, and whatever you come up with next week. Right. And then the final review of all of the money articles that night on the 20th. Because on Thursday, we have the school. On right. Thursday, yeah. we've got SAU 90 from soup to nuts. And then the next date we've got is January 3rd for the final review on the budget. When is the last day for petition articles? 10th. January 10th. Yeah. And our hearing, well, that at 5 o'clock, yeah. everybody runs in to yeah, see exactly. what came in. <laughs> we'll find out that at 5 o'clock that night. Yeah. But uh, we will be able to pull everything together and get all the prints made for the 12th for the public hearing? We have to. Mm -hmm. I yeah. know. It's not a question. It's we'll making have. me nervous. Yeah. Christy, I've got a couple of questions for Christy. David, go ahead. Basic, simple yes, sir. question. This starts with Article 10. We went through the 10 articles and also moved here. Are there now a new t 10 articles before then, or are we just out of number 11? First one is elections, the rest of yeah. zoning. 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 So those are being. Yeah. Those are out of our purview. Yeah. We, they're put up by the planning board, and uh, they're now subject to change at the legal session. Okay. And the zoning articles are posted online. If you go to the Town of Hampton page, right in the front, it'll show you the proposed zoning articles. Um, Christy, you know I get hysterical over this. <laughs> uh, at the end of October, I'm seeing $51,769 encumbered from 2015. That drives me bananas. What are we doing? If they couldn't buy that stuff in 2015, are you going to surrender it to the unfunded? I mean, I, a whole year later drives me nuts. 
but they belong to the department heads. None of them are my ward. None of them are my. Can we so. cry? There was one for the telephone system at the fire department that never that contract didn't go through, so that one's still listed on there. Can we cry or whine or threaten or strike or note, something? So I will pass it along. Please, please, because that drives me absolutely nuts. Um, unfunded, because you you are talking about the um, unassigned fund balance, electronic storage. Uh, how about, Fred, do you think there's any money or any hope of buying the chief's fire hose and his ice rescue stuff out of that fund? You're not talking a huge amount of money. Can we please, please... You can't take it out of the unreserved fund balance. Why? Because it's against the law. Oh, all right. Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> the, the funds can be used for two purposes. Okay. Okay. Number one, it can be used uh, in a warrant article at town meeting. And number okay. two, it can be used to offset the tax rate. However, the ice equipment's already been bought. It arrived yesterday. And they're in the, the process. Whole thing? The whole thing. Good. And they're in the process of assembling it in the fire department and making it ready for use. Okay. All right. And how about the hose? The hose, you did take the hose. The hose. Some hose has been ordered, and, and I talked to the chief today, and I suggested that uh, he would he should look at that again, and we should take a look and see what hose is needed, <clears throat> particularly the hose. There's, there's the hose that goes on the engine, the, the, uh, the, the lines that come off of the reel on the top of the engine. Yes. We're looking to replace those yes. uh, on all but one engine, and that's the deadlined engine right okay. now. Uh, so we're, we're looking to do that. We're also looking to replace some of the two-and-a-half-inch hose, which is somewhat old. But it is uh, currently tested and that it's viable for use. Because the 35-year-old hose gives me the willies. I'm sorry. but well, Fred, were they able to um, purchase that Jaws of Life for the engine 4? That's a good question. That, I believe that's on the engine. They already got it? I believe so. Because yeah, they said there was a shortage. Good. Yeah. Um, I think that's on the engine, last time I heard. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. Well, if we can do some of these odds and ends, especially for the fire department, that helps. We're conscious of the hose, and, and I've asked for prices on the hose, today's prices, mm -hmm. so that we can take a look at what could possibly be done out of the departmental budget to try to bring in some new hose in the, in the system. Okay. Anybody else have any further questions? Jenny? Well, couldn't you use, if you had unfunded balance... If you had money left over from this year, couldn't you buy the fire hose out of that? Only if there's a warrant article. Okay. Yeah, un, un, the un, unreserved, oh, that's it right. used to be called the unreserved unfunded right. yeah. balance uh, at the end of the year can be used for two purposes only. It can be used, well, there are three purposes. One, to reduce the debt offset of the town, the budget runs over, okay? Yeah. Offset uh, taxes. Yeah, you can offset taxes with it at the time the tax rate is established. We did that with a million dollars this year. And you can appropriate funds at the town meeting through a warrant article. Okay. Now, we some of us, I guess, are getting questions. <laughs> I'm certain, certainly getting questions. What's the size of the unassigned fund balance right now, Christy? I'm doing everything in my bag tonight, so I will not say that until I check. Oh, okay. I did say it when we were setting the tax rate. I just don't remember the okay, exact. Okay, we took the so. million out, so we still have, and we're trying to maintain five to seven million. We're trying. That? The minimum we we maintain by uh, selectman's policy is at least the amount of money that is on paid that represents unpaid taxes. Right. Uh, and just so everybody understands how we get this formula done. Um, the unreserved and designated fund balance is cash, so to speak. Right. Now, that cash is offset by the fact that part of that is actually taxes due. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I go back to when I first arrived here and we had a fund balance of zero. I uh, remember. And, and we had, uh, I think the auditors came in with $740,000 that year that was surplus mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the year after the audit. And there was an automatic motion on the board to take it all and apply it to the tax rate. And my answer was, I'll have the treasurer here next week and be, be prepared to borrow it. Yeah. Because at that point in time, when you look at the total amount of taxes billed, we still had $2.5 million worth of uncollected yeah. taxes. And that's where that fund balance comes from. It comes from the total appropriations and the total revenues mm -hmm. less the tax rate. Mm -hmm. Okay, So if you have $25 million worth of taxes that are billed and you spent $25 million worth of appropriations, mm -hmm. 
and you've only collected $20 million, you're $5 million in the hole. That's kind of the way the situation goes. We, we don't collect 100% of our taxes every year because and the state the law allows people not to pay them for three years. The economy was bad at that time. It was very bad at that yeah. time. But we started building the fund, and I think at, at, at its highest point, the fund was something in the order of uh, $7.5 million. Mm -hmm. And we used it to buy. Like that. Do they then get that 12% interest on top of that? Does that roll? The interest comes back in, and but that goes to the general fund. Mm -hmm. In the year, it comes back in. Revenue. When we, when we do the revenues, which is something that's, that's uh, not officially done until September when the state says we have to have a final revenue figure, uh, part of that is unpaid taxes and the interest in, uh, that's accrued on the unpaid taxes. So uh, when that money comes in, it goes into the, into the revenue side of the, of the appropriation schedule, mm -hmm. and it stays there until the end of the year. Whatever is, let's say we have... $5 million we estimate for revenues, and we collect $7 million, $2 million will automatically go to the surplus. So we're always trying to collect more revenues than we project, particularly from the state and federal governments. <laughs> and then uh, that, that gives us leverage when we're bonding because it, of the bank. It does. It also means that we don't have to borrow in anticipation of taxes, right. which is a big deal. Right. Uh, when I first arrived here, we were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest per year borrowing in anticipation of taxes. Right. We don't do that anymore, simply because we have the cash reserve. Well, actually, in the 80s, the treasurer was borrowing, he was borrowing up to $100,000, which was a lot of money in those days, yeah. and then he'd pay it off on December 1st, and uh, January 1st, and turn around and borrow that amount again. Right. And that's when we did the real push to go to twice a year right. tax yep. billing. And a lot of people did that just to eliminate that situation. There were a lot of towns in New Hampshire the day after town meeting that went out and borrowed their town, their school, and the county taxes in total. Mm -hmm. And then they, But you have to repay those by December 31st of that year yeah. because the state yeah. law doesn't allow you to roll it over. Yeah. So there have been some... In a bad some, situation doing that. <laughs> but there's been some forward progress on some of this stuff like that. It's, so that it's taken time, but we're getting there. Yeah. And, and we, we have a solvent situation where we have more reserves than we have obligations, yeah. which is helping a lot. Okay. Christy, um, the end of November figures. Yeah. Oh, Madam Chair, what? I just had one I'm question. Sorry. I have one question for the town manager. Okay, make sure we can hear you. I will make sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, we've discussed this before. Many towns have gone to quarterly tax billing. Mm -hmm. And as these tax rates and the bills get progressively larger, I think there's an advantage for both the town and the taxpayer to get these in smaller incremental billing cycles than getting them just twice a year. I know you said this. there are administrative costs to doing this. There are. But many communities seem to find the net benefit greater than the costs. The communities that generally do that are either cities, uh, which have much larger tax obligations than a town like Hampton does, or towns that have, uh, and I'll give you an example, I, I managed the town of Pittsfield for six years. And when I left there, we did a reval. And the reason we did the reval was if we hadn't done that, the tax rate would have been over $100 per thousand. So there are towns that are in that situation, so they go to quarterly simply because they need to do it for the income and to keep the borrowing down. And that's a good point, and that is something that we have to analyze and determine whether or not it's in the town's best interest to go ahead and do that versus the cost and expense. Mm -hmm. And the, the real con is the cost. Yes, absolutely. Because yeah. I came from a town that did that 40 years ago. Yeah. And it's in Massachusetts, it's fairly Different common. state, yeah. different, different statutes. Yeah. yeah, but there's no statute that says you can't build quarterly. Uh, you have to have in New Hampshire, There's a, you have to get permission to do that. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it would be granted. I'm sure it would be, yeah. yeah. What time was that, boy? And on. And on. Well, fortunately, we're not aspiring to be here. Well, and we certainly are not aspiring to have you move there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm too valuable a member of this community, right, Bob? Exactly. I think this is way above my pay grade. <laughs> Christy, the, the end of November financials, you usually get them to the selectmen about the middle of the month. You anticipating that next? No, this week. 
and you'll give us a buzz so we can pick up our copies because that will really help us to have the month yes. close at the end of November because she's going to be getting right down to the down to the final uh, chapters there. So I will let you guys know when they're uh, ready for you to pick up. Um, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, the IT report, do you want to make a couple of observations? Yeah, I observe that this committee made a unanimous vote to ask for the IT audit report. I observe that the chair uh, reminded Regina that we needed that information. I observe that Regina, as her usual, responded very quickly mm -hmm. and gave us the literal answer to our question, which turned out to be, it's not here. Right. You know, we don't have it. So the natural question is, when can we expect it? As soon as I get it. Uh, I don't know. Do we need to make a formal vote on that question as well? Or it was received this afternoon. As soon as it as soon as it goes to the board of selectmen and they determine determine it will be released, you'll have it. Okay. Any any expectation as to when that is likely to happen? I can't tell you. I'm not on the board. Right. Well, Monday night, maybe. Regina, do you have an expectation of when this is going to happen? <laughs> I guess if the chairman approves it to go on the agenda for Monday night, yep. that would be a possibility. Yep. Right. Is it on the agenda uh, right now? Well, it's not on the agenda at the moment because the agenda is not done, but I suspect it will be there. Okay, great. So we can have an answer next week then on that. We can actually start analyzing that and move forward on it. That's super duper. Great. Thank you, Regina. Thank you, Mr. Manager. I do have another Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Pierce came in here uh, about a month ago with uh, a bunch of numbers, on uh, which I found rather... Interesting. I haven't heard anyone refute those numbers. Basically, he was trying to answer the question, we paid off something over half a million dollars in debt. Why is the the, the default budget, the proposed budget, $800,000 higher when we paid off a half a million dollars? Or no, 300000 higher. Thus, what, there's an $800,000 difference. Is that, is that right, Mike? Yeah, if you figure in the retirement of the debt, yes. Yeah, We've never figured that in before, so I don't understand how we can start figuring it in now. What do you mean? The retirement of the debt has never been added back before. I believe Christy provided some information on that going back several years. Christy, didn't it go back to like 2007 or something, that sheet you did? I don't understand what you're asking, Regina. Well, you're making a comparison that's never been made before, is my point. I mean, usually in accounting, you look at things, how do I want to say it? Um, I can't think of the word right now. Apples and apples, the word I'm looking for, consistently. So Yeah, yeah. So we pay and, and it I off. I, I mean, we could be towns that don't pay off our debt. Oh, I'm not. I'm, be in a lot I'm, better, I'm a lot worse condition than we are. I'm delighted to be paid off our debt. But as I said in that meeting, you know, I take on, a, if a person takes on a second mortgage to, you know, do home improvements, he's delighted when that second mortgage is paid off and expects that he's going to have more discretionary income. Mm -hmm. Well, there's several uh, lines that... What we're seeing is that discretionary income is not there, even though we paid off the debt. And so I, I think that's a fair analogy. Uh, well, I've actually been looking at Mr. Pierce's worksheet, and I had asked for the electronic version, but I have, I have had, you know, discussions with Mr. Pierce, and I have not received that. But just looking at the hard copy, I am not even sure if I brought that tonight because I didn't think we were going to be talking about it. But I also have something else that... I've been looking at that just not shows everything that's gone net, gone up, but it also shows line items that have stayed the same or gone down. So I think as part of maybe the final budget review, yeah. we should just not look at lines that have gone up, but also lines that have gone down. Uh, yes, that's but may, let sure. me ask a, a, probably a stupid question. We have debt service, which is clearly outlined in our book. We owe on bonds. Right for highways and God knows what. It took us five years <laughs> to pay off the debt for the mechanical packers, the trailers, the first set of carts, et cetera, for the new uh, public works waste pickup stuff. That debt is gone. I didn't see that we added a new debt in there. So that should be a vacancy in the debt service 
coming into 2017, should it not? That's correct. That's why that's correct. Yeah, that went down by, was it, 519,000? Yeah, well, I think that was what Mike was saying. If we don't owe that money anymore, if it's paid off, then that should lower our indebtedness by whatever we were. It did. It did. It exactly did that. Okay. And the point being, if you stop paying at uh, 519 and 16, then you have that 519 based on your total bottom line budget numbers that you've managed to add to the 17 budget plus uh, 300 and some thousand. That's making an 800 and some thousand dollar increase, basically. Okay. Because but that no, because that five hundred nineteen thousand dollars that was paid down does it wasn't it was because we did refinancing and we paid off we paid off the recycling like no, we stated in refinance. another one yeah pure refinance uh, not refinance it was debt payment yeah debt debt that was refinanced in previous years right well that but it it was in fact a debt payment so how can you before. add that back to one well, year I'm not adding it back I'm just saying well yeah that's in my mind that's what it's doing well, it's that we've never done it before to explain why you might be confused on that. The, the it's not consistent. Other bodies line. in this town are telling us that the budget is only up to $300,000. $295,000, right. something, I believe. You don't yeah. mind if I round it to three hundred, dollars do you? No. All right. So oh. we're being told that the budget's only up $300,000, but we're not being told that we paid off a half a million dollars in debt. It's shown. All right. It's no, shown no, as no, part no, of the no, budget. No. When we make the statement that the budget's <laughs> up $300,000, we don't point out that that includes... Uh, the five hundred thousand dollars that we no longer have to pay. It's gone. It's gone. Right. right. So therefore it's actually up if you take the debt out, which we which we did because we paid it off, it's actually up not three but eight hundred thousand. Right. That's how we come to that. That's exactly what it is. Actually, as I'm thinking here, we paid off the three point one million, whatever it was. In fi over five years. That was not a reconfigured debt, was it? Because you've got no. the other reconfigured debts here. <coughs> the uh, wastewater treatment plant for 99, because I remember we've asked you to consolidate some of the loans. But that 3.1 million was to be paid off over five years. But we paid in five year increments. So every one of the five years, a fifth of that debt was taken off. So 500,000 of it wouldn't have come off all at once. The last payment would have come off all at once. Is that making any sense? I see what you mean, because I know the original, well, but it was 500,000 for each of the five payments, wasn't it? Well, Christy has the exact number. It was yeah. slightly over $500,000 in annual debt service that, that has been retired. Yeah. Right. Per a year, we're paying five hundred thousand dollars, which you you're saying is annual. Yeah. Right. We retired. We retired five hundred thousand plus dollars in in debt service. Yeah. That means annual payments. Not okay? the three point one million. Right. right. And that that occurred as a result of paying off certain loan principles. Yeah. I had that accurate, Fred. More or less. I don't have the figures in front of me. So well, yeah. more. That's why I said more or less. Hmm. Paid off debt. We do that every year. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was retired was the recycling equipment and the 2005 SRF. Uh, right. What was, the, what was the total uh, payment last year on that? I don't know what the pay. I don't have that in front of me, but I know that the two that were retired uh, total 453, no, 452,104. In terms of debt service. So um, the question was that I believe Mr. Pierce, so I don't know why you're being silent, since this is your work. Uh, you're doing a good enough job of talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did some looking at it, I'm trying to figure out exactly, you know, where you're coming from, and what I'm looking at is, minutes, I'm looking at uh, $300,000 more on the we budget, need to sort that's this obvious, 500000 coming off the debt service, you can add those two together and say that the budget's actually above by eight hundred thousand. Right. But the question is, all right, where in the budget is that eight hundred thousand dollars? And that appears to be the question that it was asked, or that you're trying to answer. And when I look at your summary here, what stands out to me is this bullet you have on here of uh, six hundred and ninety-seven thousand dollars in wage and benefit increases. 
That seems to be the you know the, the huge chunk that establishes. That is that is a big part of it, right? I don't have that sheet with me either, but um, I don't have my computer sitting here, so I'm a little bit of a loss as the particular numbers. But no, if you if the spending goes down in one slot, that means if you keep the same number, you still have that extra money to spend the next year. Let's say the budget's uh, twenty-six million dollars then you have it for 16 and you say your budget for 17 is going to be 26 million dollars but you paid off 519 you're going to have 519 thousand dollars left over unless you spend it on something else yeah it's just and, plain old logic and, but putting that aside when you add all the stuff up that they actually added to the budget it's a, a significant amount right? well the, what i'm what i'm driving to is that there seems to be uh, not a consensus on the numbers, and these numbers are really facts, and facts shouldn't be in dispute. Right. Well, I have a problem with this worksheet, which is why I wanted to ask for the electronic one, because on the 2017 increase, a lot of these figures, 83,629 is showing up on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 line items. I highly doubt that 14 line items have increased by the same exact amount. Well, um, I, 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 I don't, I mean, I didn't create the sheet. I didn't, I didn't at all. Let me have see your copy, because I don't even have that with me. I, don't think that I assume that Mike would give you this. And I have some information that both me and the finance director have been working on in this area, but we wouldn't, this was, the agenda tonight was for the Warren articles. Right. Well, so I would like to postpone that discussion, Ms. Chairman, for when we actually, actually are talking about the budget. Actually, that's exactly where I'm driving, Regina. Okay, good. Uh, I, would, I would like the, I would like management to uh, you know, ha come up with their own numbers in these categories, so that we can analyze them and probably, perhaps even just agree on what they are, so we don't have to dispute over our numbers because they are just facts. It's already been worked on. Uh, so I would look forward to seeing that. The particular line item that disturbed me. And I'm just going to use round numbers here, Regina. So forgive me. According to the peer summary sheet, he says that there is seven hundred thousand dollars in wage and benefit increases. And I believe that figure is completely wrong. And that's what he says. And he also says that slightly more, we'll call it just $500,000 of that wage and benefit increases is actually included in the default budget. So Which five, we, five out of incorrect this. Incorrect in stating that. So what he's asserting is that five out of seven dollars in wage and benefit increases are in the default budget and thus not subject to voter <laughs> uh, discussion on the matter. And no, that's, that's not that really correct. What it's in the default budget, we're assuming that has to do with union contracts and things of that nature, whether it's a binding contract. Well, yeah, I wasn't, discri that I wasn't is, discriminating. That is what's just, consisted in the default budget. I wasn't discriminating whether it's contractually or not. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that's the line item you have here. Uh, I'd like to know more about that. I'd like to have those numbers confirmed or, or, or refuted. Um, and that's really all I'm after. And I don't expect an answer. Susie, can I, we just... Yeah, I mean, I'm working, we are working on this request. I mean, we're, I am very aware of the okay. sheet that Mr. Pierce passed out a month ago, mm -hmm. and it is being worked on, but I just figured we would discuss that as when we were in the final review of the budget. Totally Does that right. make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. Well, I'd rather have okay. it before the final review so we can okay. actually have time to review it. And I, I appreciate it, but we are, and I didn't know how many extra money articles you guys were going to have until I watched your meeting last night. You know, I didn't know the total number. Um, we're really pressed for time, and we need time to discuss some of this stuff. And all I've got is uh, December, well, we've got school Thursday, and then we've got December 20th, January 3rd, and January 5th. And, and We've got a lot to go over. We need to finalize the special money articles first. That's my goal. And then we need to go over the budget, the operating budget, with the default budget. Christy, have you done anything yet with the gasoline stuff? Yes. And how did you come out on that? I have uh, information uh, that I am completing, and I believe it's going to be on the uh, Board of Selectmen's agenda on Monday night. Okay, so the, on the gasoline and diesel. Yes. Okay, so that if we get adjust, going down. adjusted amounts or whatever <laughs> you're going to find, at least we'll know that. Yeah, the um, we're going to have to go over the collective bargaining and the couple two three articles. 
that Fred said you'll be going over Monday night. We can do that on the 20th. And then I would like to start the final review of the actual warrant articles, the money articles, and then fight over when we get to the operating budget. If we are lucky enough to do all the money articles on the 20th, that night, I hope, then January 3rd and 5th, we've got to move our toes. So I would say that you would be presenting that and the default and stuff on the January 3rd and 5th. Because by then, at least, if we can put the money articles to bed, and have a roughly total of what the money articles come to. Do you any does anybody have any other thoughts or any problems on that? I'll make a motion to adjourn at eight oh five. Okay, well give me give me one second. You you guys everybody comfortable with that? We want to has everybody have their book, Danielle, you school book? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah. Mr. Jones, you got your book from the SAU? Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Okay then uh, we should be able to do the school and the money articles. Um, I mean, Thursday. yeah, it shouldn't. It's, you have operating budget. And um, four war. The bond for the academy. The Sacred Heart. Sacred yeah. Heart. The And the building. 300,000 maintenance. maintenance. And I believe that's it. Yeah, I think that's it as well. Yeah. So that should be. Uh, you seconded second it. Yes, I did. Not, yes, I did. No, no, I do have one more <laughs> question. It's too late. Hey, when wait a minute. Uh, pay attention. Pay attention. When are we going to have the uh, current gasoline schedule rather right, last year? When are we going to have this one? What? What? The gasoline schedule. You just said, she just said they were going to talk about it's going to go to the Board of Selectmen on, on Monday. Monday. So, after yeah. that, so on be... the 20th, we'll be talking about we'll that. On the 20th of December. That's well, a I can email it out prior to the you could, You're well, more than welcome to do that. That would make everybody happy, I'm sure. And she can email it to the entire committee, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Sounds it's, good. Instead of forwarding it to me, throw it out to the whole budget committee. And that, and Regina will have her copy anyway. Okay, good. Then I think we're in pretty good shape because I'm getting really nervous about that calendar. Uh, Mr. LeBranch has moved to adjourn at. Second. At 8:07, <laughs> and Jenny Bridal already seconded it. Okay. In favor? Gentlemen, thank you. Channel 22. Thank you, Channel 22. Uh, thank you. Um, Regina, the t Nothing, these two books.